Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Forecast 2016 to 2019. El Nino has just peaked. The forecast is for a 4 degrees Celsius drop in Pacific water temperatures. You're seeing two different oceans turning cool, the Atlantic Ocean with the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, as well as the Pacific decadal oscillation, both trending cooler. There was a significant 1 degree Celsius drop over the last month in the Pacific. We'll take a look at the solar cycles with the forecast leading us into a grand solar minimum through solar cycle 25. I correlated different data sets of the AMO, the PDO, as well as the solar cycles to give us a forecast running out for the next three years. Looks like we're going to repeat something from the 1860s at the minimum in cooling. The orbital diagrams are matching up exactly with the gas giants. You'll see the weather patterns starting to change globally with a mix up in different air flows, giant floods, epic snowstorms blowing through 150 year records. This is definitely going to affect the volatility and futures on the soft commodities. Long spot returns turning negative. We'll focus on wheat, corn, and soybean futures. And this is your crystal ball for the next three years. El Nino has peaked late November 2015. You can see that this El Nino was not as strong as the 1997 El Nino. Interestingly, the water temperatures dropped off a cliff, a full degree drop over one month. If you're unfamiliar with what ENSO is, it takes into consideration four different areas of the Pacific Ocean in the equatorial band off of South America. They're labeled as Nino 1 and 2, 3 and 4. This is Nino 1 and 2 dropping off faster than the last two El Ninos. Running through the individual indices here, Nino 1 decline, 2 declining, 3 peaked, and 4 is in decline as well. These were different forecasts out through October of 2017. In my own opinion, you're looking for a little bit cooler drop than what's shown on this chart here. They show about four degrees Celsius. I believe it might be a little bit cooler than that. The light teal color is what you're following for that forecast. Bob Tisdale, as always, doing a great job wrapping up what's happening with the Pacific temperatures. And you will hear from the global warming alarmist crowd that this year was the Godzilla Nino, but it's not. 97 was stronger in all regions, which if we follow the trend of 1974, which is equivalent to what the peak just was, we are going to drop and go down to the same equivalent temperatures with a four degree drop, repeating a pattern of 1974. Now these charts that I'm using now only go back to 1940. 50. So these are the strongest La Nina 74 through 76 in the 1980s. This is the area in question on the globe if you're looking for it on a map. I compared side by side an El Nino and a La Nina dynamic height temperature difference. This is actually the depth in the water from the surface down to about 200 meters. So you can get a comparison there. 2010 to 2000. So you can see the speed at which these events take place. The flip from warm to cold occurs in a single year. Globally, air masses shift and change. Places that were warm and dry turn cool and wet. I circled in the red box the strong cooling in the 1970s. Now what I'm trying to do is correlate different ocean temperatures and solar cycles in data set. Let's start with the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. You can see it undulates in a 50 year pattern. If you hop over to Wood for Trees, they have interactive graphs. You can input your own data and come up with your own. This is the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation known from this point as AMO. Interestingly enough, the land base match up pretty well with the AMO. Closer view here of our satellite record data matched up with land-based temperature AMO overlay. It's a pretty tight correlation between land temperatures and what the Atlantic Ocean does. Currently, it's cooling. PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, undulating as well between the El Nino, La Nina. I took into consideration also the Southern Oscillation Index. 
Blue is the cool La Nina. Red is the El Nino going negative. I started to overlay the data sets here to see if there was any correlation sometimes when both of these are dropping concurrently. And I did find through the 1940s, you'll see that significant spike drop there as well as in the 1970s. I isolated the data a little bit further to squeeze out some of the noise. And when you can see both of them dropping at the same time, global temperatures did drop. That's when we see these incredible snowy winters and blistering cold. The drops occurred 1915 through 1917. That's a nice, easy way to take a look at it again through the 1970s. You'll see a couple drops there. I isolated the data a little further into the last five years. You'll see that the PDO and the AMO are both trending cooler. And this will be the case for several years. Jumping over to the active region count, we are going into our regular cyclical 11 year decrease in solar activity. But this next solar cycle 25 is going to be a grand solar minimum, which adds a trump card on top of this. So I started interlacing these data sets of solar activity, the AMO and the PDO. Now you notice when we come off the peak of a solar maximum, in 2005, both the ocean temperatures were spiking. The Pacific was going warm and the Atlantic was going warm, even though the trend for solar activity and total solar irradiance was decreasing. Forecast for this next solar cycle, the sun should be going into almost zero activity around 2019. And if you look at our current solar cycle compared to historical, it's trending far lower than the norm. If you like numbers, here you go. Our current cycle 24 is matching up with something around solar cycle 7. So what I did is I took the La Nina events over the last 120 years in severity, as well as duplicating the Southern Oscillation Index with severity. Now what I was looking for is exactly what you see here in the yellow box. Solar maximum tipping into the downtrend as well as the PDO going cold and the AMO going cold on a match off the peak of the solar cycle. The closest one I could find with the exact match, what I was looking for, is this 1970 to 75 set. We are going to repeat that right now. Next best I could find that was probably three years past the solar maximum peak was the 1908-1910 era. And the third best fit was at the trough at the solar minimum 11 year cycle with the PDO AMO going cool at the very bottom of the sunspot cycle. Again, cycles are very important. So when we're looking at the trend from a higher cycle to a medium to a lower cycle, you need to jump back into the 1830 solar cycle 8, 9, and 10 to see exactly what's happening today. This is the exact match. So when we take a look at a 50 year slice of time, with the Nino index, that's the reason I'm forecasting for a four plus degree drop on this. All bets are off if there's a volcanic eruption though. You can see the cooling from Pinatubo. If the solar minimum and the AMO and the PDO are all cooling and we get a major eruption, we are going into a year without a summer again. Orbital diagrams. This is what will happen in 2017 when the cooling should really be evident. On the left is 2017, on the right is 1838. Notice the similarities in the gas giants out there aligned on the far side of the sun. 1859, isn't it really interesting how all the gas giants are on one side of the sun when these cooling events happen? 1974, we see the same thing again, three gas giants on the opposite side of the sun. 1904, three gas giants on the other side. 1924, La Nina, three gas giants on the other side. Once you enter the parameters into solar system scope, you can just jump through, start going by 100 year increments in time. It doesn't take long before you start to match up different solar cycles and different rotations on the planets that align. Left is 2017, December. Right side is 400 BC. I didn't know much about this time period, so I did a quick dig into historical timeline, see what would happen. Famine, famine, drought, plague. Another matchup that quickly came up was 5000 BC with the exact 
orbits that are happening next year. Food growing is going to be affected in the Northern Hemisphere, especially with wheat across Russia, China, Canada, the United States. Chicago Mercantile Exchange does a wrap-up here of the El Nino-La Nina impacts. They always have volatility during La Nina, specifically in worst-case La Ninas like 73-74. Late Victorian era, we can see across other areas of the world, except for North America, when we look at Indonesia, India, Australia, Africa, South Africa, we can see there was changes there as well. The global weather patterns are starting to shift. They shall shift further, intensifying the cold, the wet, the disruption in crops. The light blue is where the weather will change most. And if you're looking at the real spot returns, anytime there's a La Nina event, everything goes negative on the return except for lean hogs, which is an interesting item there. The wheat futures volatility. La Nina jumping 33% volatility, and if the temperature is 2 degrees off, you're looking at a 45% volatility index on that. Corn follows the same thing, volatile during La Nina. Look for a 22% difference on that. Realize volatility as well, pushing around 35%. Soy futures, looking for somewhere between 35 and 40% on the volatility most interestingly, this year and last year were El Nino peak years, yet the distribution of temperatures in the United States, as we all know from March to May, was extremely cold. This is a La Nina map, not an El Nino, so something happened last year where it was already showing La Nina features through the beginning of the year, as well as the heating in the southern United States this year, which would be expected. You can guarantee there is going to be an increase in volatility, raising the cost of all the soft commodities. All of our food prices are going to rise. This is a repeating cycle. At the minimum, the same intensity of 1973, 4, 5, and 6 La Nina. At the maximum through the next few years, the 1860 cooling. And since the data only goes back so far, with the matchup in the solar cycles and the different ocean temperatures, not, we're looking really more realistically at something from the 1940s or the 1860s. It's a cycle. It's always a cycle. There's no linear time. It's all cyclical time. We start to see the repeating patterns again. Chinese dynasties fell on a repeating pattern. These solar minimums are real. It has begun again. You have until about 2020. To prepare yourselves, it's going to intensify from there. I'm putting out next the forecast from 2020 out to 2025. When we get into the true grand solar minimum, global temperatures are going to drop about 3 degrees Celsius. Whatever preparations you're making now, whether you're learning how to grow food, get your community organized, talk to your families, the clock is running. You have three years at the most before it's evident what's happening and people start to panic. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I really hope it helps you prepare so you can thrive during this time. More fortunes have been made during these volatile times than there are during stable times. Go in it with a mind frame of thriving and prospering during this time because you have advanced information on what is going to happen. Prepare yourselves well. Good luck.